Hi. Uh, in this video segment, I want to make sure we are able to clearly differentiate between two terms that are used in chemistry. And unfortunately, uh, they are often used incorrectly. So we want to do our best uh, to try to make sure we clearly understand the difference between these two. So when we have, and um, there are two basic types of data that you would be collecting um, in the lab. There is quantitative data, like a quantity, quantitative, and there is qualitative, describing a quality like color, qualitative. Okay. Um, they are both equally important, so don't think that numerical data is always more important. Sometimes our qualitative data can help us um, you know, know for sure a chemical reaction is complete, for example. Um, what we're talking about with accuracy and precision are the quantitative data that we will be collecting. All right? And accuracy and precision are two different terms. The word accuracy refers to how close are we to what is the true or sometimes called accepted value. It's like scientists have repeated this experiment so many times with the best equipment available that this value is the current accepted value. It's the closest we can get to the truth with our current uh, technology and understanding. Okay? It's typically reported as a percent, and it is the accepted or true value. I will typically put true minus experimental over the true times 100 would be another way, or the accepted minus experimental over the accepted value times 100. Okay. Now, there are quite a few people that will make it the absolute value of that numerator, in which case you would always get a positive percent error. But I think it's very helpful to evaluate whether your number was too high or too low when you performed your experiment. Because if you know whether it's too high or too low, that can help you direct your mind to troubleshoot and improve your experiment. So I don't use that absolute value. Bear in mind a lot of textbooks will, and that shouldn't be too confusing. You know, you just put an absolute value, you always make it positive. All right, so let's take an example. So um, he, Clum, Clyde Clumsy did an experiment, and he finished and found his density to be. That means that's the experimental value. He looked in a reference book. Reference is where we're going to find the true value. Okay, so we're going to take the true, 6.44, minus the experimental, 6.85, divided by the true, 6.44 times 100. And if you do that math, I get a negative 6.4%. That negative value tells me that something that Clyde did gave him a value that was too high. Maybe his balance was off, so his mass was too large. Or maybe he measured his volume wrong, and his volume was actually sm you know, too small, his reading. So it can give you an indicator direction for troubleshooting an experiment. Now, this next one does require a bit of algebra, and I'll walk you through this. We've got the true is our unknown. In the experiment, they found the value. You don't need to worry about those units right now. But 20.7 over the true, a positive percent error, times 100. So that's our experimental. That's our percent error. And they're asking, what is the true or accepted value? Okay, 7.59. All right, so... And the first thing I'm going to do is do the opposite operation of multiplication, and I want to bring that 100 over. So it's multiplied. The opposite operation of multiplication is division. 
So I'm going to divide both sides by 100. And so I brought the 100 over to the right hand side by doing the opposite operation. Okay. Now I have an unknown in my denominator and I need to get rid of it. It's being divided so I'm going to do the opposite operation or cross multiply. So I'd have true minus 20.7 is equal to 0 0.0759 times the true. So I multiplied both sides by true. Now what's implied in this is that's a 1t. So now what you want to do is get all the t's to one side and all the non-t's, like this number, to the other. So this is added on this side, so I'm going to subtract to bring to the other. This is subtracted, so I'm going to add. So I've got 1t minus 0.0759t. And then to bring this to the other side, it's subtracted, so I'm going to add it. So I have 20.7. Now we can cluster our t's. 1t minus 0.0759t, if I did my math right, and you always want to check me out, any one of us can do a finger slip. So 1 minus 0.0759 gives me 0.9241t is 20.7. Now to get t, this is multiplied here. So to bring that to the other side, I'm going to do the opposite operation. So I'm going to divide by 0.9241. And when I do this, and you should make sure you can do this, you get 22.4. And you may not know what a mole is. We, you know, If you watch one of my previous videos, it's one of our SEI units for amount. Um, but just make sure you put the same units down. OK, how does this contrast to precision? Precision. Okay, so precision is often called repeatability. So you'd have to have three or more trials to even talk about repeatability. So you'd need to perform the experiment at least three times. So you need three times um, the data. Do the same experiment three times. Okay, repeat it over and over again. So if the values are clustered together, they're precise. So I would call that precise. And here, if we took an average of those values, that's precise. Both this one and this one, those values are far apart as a qualitative way. So those are not precise. Now remember, accuracy means how close they are to the true. So we can call that true kind of the center of the dartboard. Um, if you took an average, even though these are spread out a lot, if you took an average of those, that data would be accurate. Okay, this data is neither accurate nor precise. We're, you know, right on where we need to be. This is both accurate and precise. And this one is precise they're close together, but it's not near the true, so it's not accurate. Okay, so that's kind of a broad differential between those times. For accuracy, we actually have a number that we're looking for, that we're seeking. Um, for precision, all we're doing is repeating and saying, how close are my multiple trials to one another? Now, for glassware, you have some glassware that tends to be more accurate. And typically, if the glassware is accurate, then multiple trials will also be the same. So it's also precise. So if we have kind of a tighter range of markings, the more precise it is. So if we look at this one, there's no markings on this. There's no range. That's not precise. That's qual what we would call qualitative. It's going to give you a rough amount, if even, 10 mLs. Fill it, you're going to have somewhere near 10, 9, maybe 10.5, okay? Both a beaker and an Erlenmeyer, you can often look at it, the more lines, often the more accurate and hence precise it would be. Beaker and Erlenmeyer are not 
precise nor accurate. I like to call these holding vessels. Okay, um, it's, it's what we're going to mix things in or heat a mixture up. And so that would be considered a holding vessel, not an accurately measuring device. Of these, this graduated cylinder, instead of going by the 50s, which is what you have here, this is going by the 1s or 10s, depending on the size. And then each little tiny line is going to the 1s place. Do you see that the range in those numbers is very, very tight? tens to ones to tenths, not, you know, 50, 100, 150, okay? So um, beakers and Erlenmeyers and test tubes are all qualitative. They, they are not used for quantitative measurements in a lab. Okay, thanks for joining me. I really appreciate your time.